G'day guys, welcome back. My name is Wildcard. Thank you for watching the Wildcard Rugby Show. This is Super Rugby Review. This is the Fijian Endura versus the Western Force. Yes, once again, this game was played in crazy conditions in Fiji. Unlike last week, where it was played in absolutely searing heat and humidity. This time, it was bucketing down raining. This was a good old game of mud rugby. One of those games that you play in your childhood where you just slide around knocking the ball on left and right, and uh, just having a good old time. In fact, I was really envious of the players because I really wanted to get out there and play in the mud myself. With that being said, despite the atrocious conditions, the Fijian Endurers once again embraced the challenges ahead of them. They came into this game with a different game plan due to the wet conditions as you would expect, and they executed and they put up a absolutely Almost perfect performance, believe it or not, against the Western Force, despite the absolutely atrocious conditions that nobody was expecting. Well, nobody have any, you know, prior practice, frequent practice in. The Endurers came out looking extremely good. The set piece looked good. The Endurers had to play with 14 players on the field, a yellow card and a red card. They were still able to easily control the game and was able to just stick to the game plan, hard, good tackle, uh, very, very physical, actually, in, in the breakdowns, and uh, just really shifting the ball left and right, as they would normally, as they always do, and then kicking those penalty goals after the forwards has earned them at the breakdowns, and that's very simple game plan, you know, a little bit of kicking game, a uh, little bit of, um, you know, try to force penalties breakdown, and that's it, and that's how they walked away with the win. Uh, you, you would figure that, a game like this, in the conditions like this with really heavy mud on the ground, where the ball doesn't bounce very well, the Fijian Endurance loose, expansive style will be really like hurting the team. Nope, the team embraced the challenge despite the heavy boots. They were able to, you know, run away, sprinting away, putting all the Western Force players looking like they're, you know, you know, grandmas on wheelchairs. Uh, you know, the kicking game as well, they were able to handle that much, much better than the Western Force. And also the the, the, the the flowy, open style rugby, the Fijian and Jura still able to play that. Uh, it was like the ball wasn't even, it was like the rain only affected the Western Force. There were so many drops from the Western Force. And the Jura just not nearly as much. Uh, I was able to handle the ball, shifting the ball left and right, uh, scoring wide tries as they, they do always against just about any team. So very, very impressive performance for the Jura's. Uh, very, 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 again, this is not a difference between the two teams, not because of, not difference between strategy, this is a difference between just mental fortitude, really, really just players, not being a bunch of absolute snowflakes out of the Australian team. There's the only way to describe it, right? Following the performance from the Waratahs last week, there's the only one way to describe it. Snowflake syndrome from the Australian side. You know, you can't tell me that the Waratahs can't play under the heat, and the Endurers can. You can't tell me the Western Force can't play in the rain, and then the Endurers can too, right? There's no reason for, like, physically for that to be an issue. It's just all mentally. Mentally, the players, you know, probably too spoiled um, and just not able to mentally adjust to the difference in conditions and just like, ah, well, let's just put it our way. One of the most uh, disappointing player from the Western Force was in the second half. The scoreboard was 25 points to 10. And I'm pretty sure the jurors had a red card still uh, uh, in the bin. The 20 minute red card was still active. This was 47 minutes in the second half. And uh, the Western Force decided to take a three points. That already told me that they wanted to go home. The weather is just too overwhelming for them. The, the conditions are just way too much for them to deal with. The players are just, you know, it's too much mud in their in their in their in their panties. I guess they had to had to go and have a shower. If, you know, want to go and have a shower instead of playing the game of rugby. It was just yeah, really really disappointing. Uh, I don't know what else to say other than just you know I, I thought it was really um, yeah disappointing to say the least. Uh, just snowflakes, absolute snowflakes out there. Couldn't cope with the conditions once again from the Australian side. So uh, with that being said, I thought the Fijian Jura. What's his name? Armstrong Val Valuva. How do, say, how do you pronounce the last name? Let me try. Ravula. Armstrong Ravula was exceptionally good. All right? It was raining. He was able to kick, what? Pretty much, he missed only one out of seven, I think, uh, conversions. Whereas Donaldson missed two out of three. Yes, 
Donaldson is a wallaby. Eddie Jones handpicked wallaby starting fly half, right? And um, couldn't even match the kicking goal kicking from a rookie with his first season in Super Rugby. Yeah. If that's not snowflake syndrome, I don't know what it is. I, I mean, it's just, uh, just, just, just disgraceful and disappointing, to say the least. So yeah, let's have a look at some of this absolutely atrocious match stats, and you will know exactly what I'm talking about, right? The, the weather, did, it didn't even, it's almost like the Fijians played in perfect dry conditions, whereas the Western Force, I don't know, they played in a swimming pool or something, right? That's what it looked like. Let's have a look at the stats. 541 run meters to the Western Force, 232. Yeah, so the, the, the run meter wise, the endurance didn't affect them at all. They were able to run left, run, run, uh, run left and right through the Western Force, uh, shifting the ball at will with no problems in the conditions. 36 defenders bidden for the, for the, for the, for the endurers. 15 turnovers conceded to 16 against the Western Force. This is, uh, this is a really just like, uh, you know, this is just really uh, a really funny stats here. The endurers, 97 tackles made, only missed 14. The Western Force, 36 missed tackles out of 149. Same conditions. Western Force couldn't make tackles, right? Like, it's just... What? Like, how could you have more than double the missed tackle count? Uh, and then also the kicking game, right? The teams, uh, it was... Uh, initially, it looked like this was going to be a very heavy kicking game. Because the, the you know, obviously the wet conditions, everybody's going to drop the ball. But, it's, but, but eventually... The, the, the endurer is just like, we're going to run the ball anyway because it's not going to affect us. Whereas the Western Force was just like aimlessly kicking the ball. I, I felt like at times uh, they can't even contest their own kicks because they keep dropping it themselves. Uh, on top of that, the kicking game overall, again, this is something that was, was like really didn't exist uh, last year for the, for the, for the Fijian endurers. Again, this game, the endurers kicked the ball away when it was needed, held onto the ball, when it was good for them to 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 to, to hold to hold on to it, and uh, yeah, twenty seven kicks for the for the for the endurers, nineteen for the Western Force. So the endurers, yeah, had a much better control over the kicking game over the over the Western Force overall. Like I said, conversion wise, uh, what is it? Seven conversions, six six out of seven for Armstrong, Ravula, and one out of three for Donaldson. Same conditions, right? Um, so here's another one. The lineouts. Oh my goodness. Fijian lost one line out in the wet conditions. The Western Force lost five out of 11 lineouts. Again, same conditions. One team just don't seem to know how to play at all. Scrum, again, the scrum as well. There were some scrum penalties against um, Western Force. There were some scrum time penalties against Western Force. Uh, and the Fijians had a scrum with seven players. Yes, the Fijians got scrum penalties with seven players in the scrum. Blame the conditions all you want. I mean, it's just a bit of a bit of a joke when you when you're watching that. Uh, Sixteen penalties considered. The Fijians were considering a lot of penalties. That's probably the only thing that they're gonna have to go back and look at. Uh, two high tackles, one yellow card. The other one went to a red card. And then I thought the first yellow card was a bit soft. I, I didn't think that was. That was warranted in yellow. You look hardly look like you touched Nick White on the head. So I think the first one probably could have been this, not just been a penalty, but overall the penalty count was just sky like piling up in uh especially towards the end of the game. The endurers were just throwing penalties away and trying to 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 to, to keep the scoreboard down against the Western Force. And I think they probably got a bit lucky to not give away another yellow get, get another yellow card towards the, right at the end of the game because of the repeated penalties. But at that point, the game was pretty much out of reach from the Western Force. They couldn't really build into anything consistency, just keep dropping the ball left and right. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much the story of the game. So yeah, let's have a look at some of the uh, the, the match. So right from the get-go, the, the recap, right? Right from the get-go, the Western Force was looking quite good, to be honest. Hang on, let me just turn this light on. There we go. Uh, so right from the get-go, the, the Western Force was really good. It was looking like the Western Force had a had a strategy to just keep it tight. They had a penalty, the one for the for the line out, the one for the mall immediately, five points to nil. And it was looking like, hey, that was gonna be 
a you know that's that's going to be the way to go for the western force but nope just completely throwing that out of the window i guess uh so the jurors reply 10 minutes into the game again they just also was keeping it really tight at the beginning of the game they kept it tight kept it tight eventually they spread the boy out wide, realizing, hey, we can play rugby despite the work conditions. Uh, they spread the boy out wide. Momo went into the corner. Five points apiece for the both teams. 17 minutes into the game, uh, there was a scrum penalty to the to the injurers. They taken a quick tap. Uh, Frank Namani took a quick tap and then, uh, you know, ran into the defense line. Quick pop offload to Raul Dalmandra, who ran in for the second try for the injurers. Uh, 12 points to 5, 60 minutes into the game. 21 minutes of the game, there was a yellow card for a, a send-off the number 8. Uh, high shot on Nick White. Really didn't look like a high shot at all for replay, unless it was a different different angle, unless it was a different thing. But it really didn't look like it, so that was... Yeah, that was that. Was that. 23 minutes in the game, there was a um, penalty against the Western Force for tackling a player without a ball. Uh, 3 points for the Endura. 15 points to 5. 20... Oh yeah, 26 minutes again. This was really slippery. The rain kind of stopped. It was literally like a swimming pool out there, right? And the uh, there was just like there was like a loose board in the middle of the field, and players were just like jumping onto the ball for like 10, 20 meters out, and it was literally like sliding onto the ball for like 10 meters out. It was just hilarious to see the people just like sliding into the ball from like such a huge distance away, uh, which I was like really envious. I really wanted to go out there and I slide around myself. Looked really, really fun. And um, yeah, after that, there was another penalty 31 minutes in to the Endurers. Uh, they taken another three points. And then finally, just before half time, um, the, uh, there was a red card to Ikanaveri for a high tackle. Yeah, and just before half time as well, Tia Tia was, uh, the, the Western Force was able to create a bit of a space, uh, you know. Draw a fun bunch of defenders in from tight play, and then you know, quick ball down the down uh, down wide to Tia Tia, who ran down for the second try for the Western Force. Halftime scored. Uh, what was it? S- Seventeen points to sorry, eighteen points to ten at halftime. That's the score. Eighteen points to ten at halftime. Uh, five minutes into the second half, there was another scrum. There was a uh, the ball comes out to Armstrong Ravula, who's just able to spot a massive open gap behind the field. Just nice little grab behind. And because of the, 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 the muddy ground, the ball didn't really roll and just like kind of pretty much like stopped inside the, almost stopped inside the, the, the end zone. And then uh, Marcy ran up, try time, easy as that, 25 points to 10. 47 minutes into the game, penalty against the Fijian Endura. And yes, I'm pre- I'm hundred because the red card was given thirty nine minutes before half time, and now it's only forty seven minutes. So I'm pretty sure the Endurers still have forty players on the field at this time. And Western Force is like, ah, gotta go have a shower, guys. Take the three. Uh, twenty five points to thirteen to the Western uh, to the Western Force. At this point, I'm like, yep, that's 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 gonna be a game loss. I have no doubt at this point that Western Force is gonna lose this game. Um, fifty minutes into the game, there was a nice little crossfield kick from. Donaldson straight into the break basket of Tia Tia ran down the sideline looked like he scored on the slow replay his um it was really interesting right so his hand was over the try line but his elbow touched the touched the the the, the sideline and the ball was just short of the try line so he was kind of like this hand touching the try line elbow elbow on the sideline boys yeah not quite reaching the line so he was out but the referee has deemed that because his hand was over the try line, has deemed that it was out in goal. So it was a 22-minute dropout. Which I thought was really weird, because I thought, because his elbow was, the, the bit where his elbow touched the sideline was actually in field, was not over the try line. So I thought it should have been a five-minute line-out to the Fijian and Juris. But, I mean, does, does it actually, do you have, having one hand over the try line, does that actually mean you, you're over the try line? Uh, I guess so, but that's that was a that was a, I thought that was a kind of kind of interesting decision because it was his elbow was clearly out before the try line, even though one of his hand was on the try line, uh, so to speak. So yeah, that was a de- de- deny try against Tia Tia. 
Um, but yeah, I think that was the right call. It was definitely not a try, um, despite the wet conditions making it pretty hard to see. Next up, we got uh, 53 minutes into the game. There was a penalty against the Western Force for ro not rolling away. At this point, you can tell the, 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 the breakdowns are really sloppy. A lot of players are kind of just like, you know, uh, like just kind of like, what do you call it? Uh, slipping over a bit at the breakdown. They're just all like, you know, laying on top of the, the ball a lot. Uh, no one was really supporting the weight. Uh, but then, yeah, there was a penalty against the Western Force for not rolling away. 28 points to 13. And finally, 56 minutes into the game, there was a penalty, another penalty against the Western Force. 45 meters out, 43 meters. Um, Armstrong Ravula kicks this one through. 31 points to 13. We're still like 20-something minutes left to play. And uh, yeah, Western Force was just not really able to build into anything. Dropping the ball left and right, really sloppy. And um, that was it. Not able to get any points in the last 25 minutes. And the Endurers were just happy to kind of just hold on. They kind of all went into that shell mode again, like they did against the Waratahs last week. Just trying to really, probably, yeah, trying to hold on to the game a bit too much. But they did, they did, they did it. Um, they were giving away a lot of penalties, but they did it. The Western Force really didn't have the heart to get themselves on the scoreboard. That was the difference. So yeah, let me know your thoughts. Like, comment, subscribe, subscribe, guys. Check out the um, merch store if you want. And uh, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys later for more reviews. Cheers.